Hi, it's Dr. Fox, and in this video, we're going to talk about parents with BPD. Now, I'm going to discuss issues and concerns that arise in parents with BPD. Many of these issues may be triggering for you. If you find them triggering or too stressful, turn the video off and talk with a trusted other, such as a mental health provider. It's always a good idea, right? Now, you can come back to the video later if you want. All right, so I'm not going to go anywhere. The video will be posted. So whenever you feel ready to address this issue, just come on back. I'll be right here for you. Now, this video is aimed at providing insight and knowledge to help you understand yourself as a parent with BPD, or perhaps learn more about your parent with BPD. At the end of the video, I'll discuss some things you can do to help yourself as a parent with BPD. So please like, share, and subscribe, and let's get into it. It is not uncommon for parents with BPD to feel a sense of ambivalence and fear related to being a parent that manifests from an intense desire to care for another. The need to be cared for and a compulsion to create or revise early traumatic abandonment and developmental experiences is really common. Parents with BPD often want to raise a child to have a different life experience than what they had. They want them to have a different and better life. Many parents with BPD find that raising a child is much more complicated than they realize. Due to having attachment issues that stem from their own development, they're likely to encounter similar or even more intense issues because as times have changed and possible deficits in learning how to overcome many of the typical and atypical developmental challenges, such as conflict resolution with friends and family, managing social media, perception of self, and developing a positive view of self and others while developing mentally and physically. These are things that as parents, everybody encounters in different ways. And with BPD, it adds an additional level of stress and complication that a lot of, of folks with, with BPD have a really hard time managing, working with, and understanding because of those deficits of self and self-understanding that they tend to have. Now also, parents with BPD are tasked with building that attachment and providing a consistent and empathic environment to help their child develop. This can be tough for those who aren't sure how to manage their own emotions, right? We just talked about that, or their, or their thoughts and their behaviors when that stress level increases. Individuals with BPD have a tendency to misinterpret behavioral expressions, skewing them towards the negative. In these cases, the parent may see the child as angry, defiant, resistant, or petulant in response to them, when in actuality, it could be just a friend issue that the child is having, a school issue, or other concern unrelated to the parent. But the parent internalizes that. So then it becomes this dynamic which the child fears and they're not sure how the parent is gonna respond, so that becomes a level of confusion for the child, and then the parent misinterprets that ambivalence or uncertainty, making it a negative, which then raises the stress for the parent, which then can cause the parent to react in an aggressive way. And what the child learns over time is that when there's ambivalence, act in an aggressive way. Now, many parents with BPD report often feeling estranged, anxious, overwhelmed, or even angry with their child on an ongoing basis. This is something that they report in the research that they experience. This is something that a lot of my clients that also have children experience on an ongoing basis, and this creates a lot of internal shaming, and it kicks off this shame cycle and this sense of self-deprecation that they experience on a, on a regular basis due to these issues. Those parents with BPD who experienced early abuse may be fearful of abusing their child and become withdrawn. Others may become intrusive and anxious in an effort to protect the child. Many parents with BPD have a fundamental difficulty in acknowledging the psychological separateness of the child. This is related to that unstable self-image often seen in those individuals with BPD. And they're at a higher likelihood to be motivated by their own unresolved traumatic attachment issues which can drive them to misperceive not only the child and how the child feels and the child's reactions, but they can misperceive themselves as well, their thoughts, feelings, behaviors. And they can sometimes create these images that are very stressful and very triggering that can set off this just really unhealthy and negative dynamic between the parent and the child. 
And what happens over time is that this can cause the traumatized parent to re-traumatize the child through insensitive, inconsistent, frightening, and confusing interactions. Recognize that these emotions, thoughts, and behaviors are not always conscious and volitional, although they may appear to be. Now, I want to be really clear on that. What I'm saying is, is that the parent isn't sitting there and saying, man, I'm going to mess up my kid and this is a great way to do it. That's not what's happening. A lot of times it's due to the component of BPD and that unstable self-image, that uncertainty and that impairment and that lack of insight into their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And that's not a rationalization for behavior. This is an understanding of what's going on. And it doesn't make inappropriate or harmful or hurtful behavior okay. But what it does is it creates a landscape for us to understand a viewpoint for us to understand of what is going on with that parent with BPD. Now, another issue that comes up that further complicates all this, just as many parents with BPD are often unable to put their distress into words, so they have difficulty communicating their feelings, communicating, right, those thoughts, feelings, those intense behavioral urges, right, and they often feel consumed with frustration and anger because they can't articulate it, and they have difficulty with the range and intensity of emotions that are aroused in a relationship with a child. So we're trying to increase your awareness and these are all the challenges and behaviors. But what about those helpful strategies that I mentioned, right? What can we do? Well, here are two that you may find helpful. The first is you wanna recognize and radically accept that your child is separate from you. This does not mean you don't love him or her but that they will have a different life than you did. And your job as their parent is to be their cheerleader, a force of encouragement to help them grow. This is done by recognizing and appreciating their uniqueness and how much they mean to you. Tell them how much they mean to you without the expectation of hearing the same in return. We wanna pump those kids up. Don't parent by the negative. Parenting by the negative means that whenever they do something wrong, that's when you become engaged. That's when you correct that behavior. Instead, when they do something right, focus on that. Have a parade, right? When they do something right. Those are the things we want to focus on. And you'll also find that the rewarded behavior is what increases, whether you reward negative behavior with attention or positive behavior with attention. You will get, all right, it's a reinforcement. So you will get an increase in that behavior over time. Now, number two, I want you to have an anger meter like this one here to help you monitor your thoughts and emotions. I've created one for you, right? As you can see, and there will be a link in the comment section so you can download it yourself because parenting is tough. It's the toughest job you'll ever have. I'm telling you that. But keeping your thoughts, emotions, behaviors, and the things you say in check will help you immensely. And when we succumb to our anger or other negative emotions, we lose that self-control and that's never good because what it can create is all that stuff that I was talking about, all of those, those negative feedback loops, all of that distress, all of that fear that the child experienced. And you know, in my 20 years of working with individuals with BPD, and I've never had a parent with BPD ever say, I'm really trying to just torment my kid and just destroy their self-esteem as best I can. I've never had one say that. What I have had them say is, I'm trying to do this differently. I just don't know how. and I don't know what to do. And that first step is increasing your insight into your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And that's what this video is about. That's what this anger is for. And I want you to be their cheerleader. I want you to throw those parades, right, when, when they do something good. I want you to encourage that positive behavior. And I want you to lift that kid up. That's what this is all about. And having BPD doesn't mean you're destined to be a bad parent. The key is to manage your maladaptive patterns. Separate yourself from your child psychologically while providing growth and encouragement. And find and utilize helpful others that can support you through this process. And there, there are groups out there that can help you do this. There are BPD support groups and many of the topics and issues that are discussed in those groups relate to parenting. Because parenting is a unique relationship, but, but a lot of folks with BPD have issues with relationships, and we know that. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe, and 
I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.